Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first part of my uh, first series on YouTube. Uh, I've been doing a lot of Affinity Designer videos on my channel. Thanks to everybody who's watching them, liking, subscribing, commenting, everything. Uh, so I've been keeping them up pretty regularly, and uh, I figured, you know what? It's time to do a, a small series so that I can like really dig into Affinity over a couple different videos. So I think this is going to be about maybe three to four part. We'll see. But let me show you what I'm doing. And uh, we're, we're going to be making a board game. So and it's not only are we going to be making this in Affinity, we're going to be using Tabletop Simulator here to actually demo it. So let me just show you what the final final product is going to be here. This is Tabletop Simulator. And you can uh, you can bring assets in. You can basically make your own game, uh, a board game here within it. Uh, so this will be like I did come up with a cool little concept for a game, and um, you know while coming up with the concept, of course, you know I wanted to use my blood brushes that I had made in uh, the previous Deadpool movie. If you guys haven't. Uh, seen that tutorial yet i did some uh i show you how to make this and then i have like a free uh, brush pack and a pro brush pack uh so definitely the links to that will be down there but um so a little bit into why we're making a board game uh but this will be a functional game we'll go over the rules later and stuff uh you know is the game going to be the greatest game uh, you know it'll be fun are you going to learn a lot from watching this series yeah we're going to really dig into um, we're going to really dig into this actually. So let me just quit this out here because, uh, tabletop simulator is great. It, it just, it doesn't have any mechanics itself. It just, um, okay. Uh, uh, it just does like what you put in and you can move stuff around. So how did I land on a board game? Well, you know, we're all here trying to learn how to use Affinity or, or different, you know, graphic design software. And, you know, it's 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 like why either it's because you want that job, you know, working for other people or you yourself want to make something creative. So I went over to Kickstarter and if we hit the Explorer tab on Kickstarter, you know, I'm thinking, man, maybe I could do an Affinity tutorial on comics, fashion. Well, by far, games is the most popular uh, thing going on on Kickstarter right now. I wouldn't say by far, but you know, out of the artistic things that would apply to uh, Affinity Designer, games is the uh, the winner here. So, uh, games is is folded into video games and tabletop games and playing cards and puzzles and stuff. But let's put it this way: tabletop games are making a huge, huge comeback, and right now. There's 263 live tabletop games that are going on. So you better believe, you know, there's a lot of people putting a lot of money into this. I can only imagine that there's people watching this that uh, might have, you know, they probably got some cool ideas. And uh, the reason why I think this is so good is because um, let's take a look. Uh, let's take a look at one. This, this, okay. So heavy hitters here just actually went up today and, uh, they're already funded at, you know, a hundred thousand dollars. And this just went up. Um, this is actually Weta made this game. It's, it's looks really cool. But as you can see, as you're scrolling down in order to do a Kickstarter, you need a lot of, you know, stuff. You really got to tell, the story of what's going on and how your game works. And, you know, there's a lot of work that goes into it. A lot of people don't have the resources to be doing that. Um, you know, a lot of these are printed out their game companies. Um, you know, they're, they're printed out like they're able to make demos and show it. So as you can imagine going through, the Kickstarter homepage here. Uh, once you start getting to the bottom, you start getting a lot of people that just don't have content. And, uh, 
you know, I'm not going to like specifically click on people and call people out for having a bad Kickstarter page, but there, there are a lot towards the bottom that are not getting funded that, um, you know, basically they might have like some cheaply printed out stuff and they have a lot of text explaining how the game works, but it just, it doesn't pull it through. And I think affinity plus tabletop, uh, simulator gives a great way to do this because it's a super low price point. Affinity, we know, is cheap, $50. Tabletop Simulator is also cheap. It's like 20 bucks. Um, both Affinity and Tabletop Simulator randomly, or not randomly, usually on holidays and stuff, they do, um, you know, they do pretty good sales. So potentially if you got an idea for a board game or even a card game, you know, I, I mean... Uh, even there's just a ton of people making, um, just cards and that that's going to be wrapped up into this series as well. I'm going to show you how to do, uh, just, uh, like playing cards and stuff. Um, I mean, as you can see, it's, it's a big industry and you know, you could do this for under a hundred bucks using affinity and, uh, tabletop simulator and you can use tabletop simulator to actually demo have a working video of your game showing like hey look you know this is how it works this is how it plays uh hopefully you know there are some people who are looking to do this and at at 350 let's see how many cards we got currently so 62 each month you know kind of going here um hopefully i can teach you guys how to at least kind of demo stuff out for super cheap and still have like a professional looking uh, video to show so people don't have to like read the rules they can just watch a little 10 minute video of you actually playing the game even if it doesn't you know it's not a final printed out ready to roll product um, so this is part one the concept video and then we're going to do uh, the board itself and the cards and the characters are all going to be separate videos. So right now I want to get into the concept. Okay. So this is my concept board. And what I ended up doing here is like anything else, you want to get a good idea of what you're doing. And you just want a board that you can just sketch on and, uh, you know, just write stuff on the side, kind of get all your ideas in one big save file that then you can copy and paste out of. So when you're trying to develop something that has multiple uh, elements to it, it's almost better rather than opening a board file and card files and just like working in those to so work on a bigger scale first, kind of draw everything out, you know, get your concepts and then what I do is um, everything here, you know, this, this, these are all the files that I made. I group, put everything in a group, uh, duplicate it, and on, let me just do it. Okay, so I duplicate the group, um, rasterize it. Rasterizing it is going to basically put it down to a pixel layer, and then I can go in with the... Uh, uh, you know, the marching ants and I can copy and paste these out of, uh, one file to another. But if you do it like this, it's going to be better. It's going to be better to do it like this, the board, you know, then you can copy out and you can have a folder with just the board and with just the cards. Um, so what are we going to be learning in this series? Uh, we're going to be going over art boards, um, that's a new feature that I haven't touched on yet that was in uh, Affinity 1.5. Um, so, you know, basically artboards are just, um, you can take assets and move them around. That way you can, you know, develop everything at the same time without, you know, flipping through your tabs and trying to do. This, this game is going to have about 20 cards. So rather than having literally 20 files, one for each card, all 21 because you'd have the back, uh, you can just do, 
an art board and you can keep dragging and dropping very easily assets between these. And when you go to export, um, uh, you can either export it as one whole, but we're not going to want to do that. Um, you know, you can pick, I just want to export front one or card back. So that's just quick. We're going to go way more into how art boards work. Uh, that will be coming up in the card video. Uh, the board, the board, we are going to be doing symbols and assets. Um, as you can see, I've kind of already went in a little bit because uh, I'm kind of trying to figure out how the tiles are going to look. And, uh, you know, I'm kind of, I'm still concepting on it, but it's going to be a, um, it's going to be a combination between symbols and assets. Symbols, I've went over a little bit in a different video and assets I haven't been over yet. So, uh, you know, we will be kind of going over that. And this board is really rough right now. Uh, we got a lot of work to do to this and that is most likely to be the next video. Um, and then we're going to do character design. So in this, uh, I, I we're going to go with the, uh, the kind of chibi looking stuff. Uh, I was drawing kind of like this and I wasn't digging it. And then I drew kind of Jason a little more cartoony. Um, and then Terry here with her Mickey mouse shirt, which was the, uh, probably my favorite girl from the, uh, Friday the 13th part two movie. Uh, which is probably my favorite Friday the 13th movie. So, you know, why Friday the 13th? Uh, you know, I've just done the blood brushes. And once I get into the how the game works, it's kind of clever. So the game is going to be just like a quick little 15-minute solo play game. You just kind of play it by yourself. Uh, the concept behind it was like, you know, if you're a designer, you're staring at the screen for hours, you know, making logos, doing, doing whatever you do. And you go to take a break, you know, to play a game or something. What do you do? You pull your phone or your iPad out, you know, and you still got that screen radiation. So the concept was kind of like, okay, this could be a little print and play game, you know, that's on an eight, eight and a half by 11. And uh, that, that's kind of the concept of it. Uh, so o overall, though, um, this is just kind of an intro video on what we're doing. And then we're really going to get into everything uh coming up here so that's what you guys got to look forward to um oh, one more thing i do want to touch on is uh okay so two things about setting up your your board your your creative board um one is you do want to have grids on it so um you want grids and you want, uh, the other thing you want is you want this to be 300, uh, DPI here because, um, here's the dimensions I went. So I, I ended up going with 20 inches by 10 inches, um, which would be, let's just see what it is in pixels. Okay. So 6,000 by 3000 pixels, uh, 300 DPI. And this gives you enough room to, you know, zoom in pretty good. And, uh, you know, that, that, that seems like a good amount to start sketching in. Now I of course was using a Wacom tablet to do all this stuff or, um, or AstroPad actually more to be more precise on the iPad. Um, if you don't have access to that, you can still, uh, you know, draw it on paper and, uh, you know, import your sketches into something like this to kind of organize your thoughts a little bit more. So we can go up to view and then uh, grids and access manager. And uh, I just had the, uh, oh, here you're going to click show grid. Um, I just had the automatic grid on, but if not, you can uh, kind of go through and pick your spacing and your subdivisions um, you know, and kind of do whatever you want with that. So, and then you can, of course, make your lines, different colors and everything. Um, the, the actual size doesn't matter just so that you can line up and say like, okay, this is two by five. 
so then here, if this is eight and a half by 11, you know, these two squares will really equal this three square. You can kind of like get it a little more fine tuned and uh, figure out your, your uh, spaces a little more. Uh, the other thing, just while we were in this, another thing is uh, the guides manager. Um, you can uh, add, this is how you add guides in Affinity is through the guides manager. And then, uh, you know, if I didn't use it for this, but if you're interested and you use guides, that's where those are. It could come in handy for, uh, you know, doing concept stuff like this. So this is where we're at. This video is simple. Um, get all your, your thoughts out and your thought process onto this. Um, you know, if you got a game idea in your mind or cards, you know, like a card game, you know, get your thoughts out and come back. We got a couple more videos. I'm going to blow through this and uh, hopefully we just have like a cool, like real world, uh, you know, series, little, little four part series here that just shows how to really make something. This is just, just to clarify, I'm not obviously putting this on Kickstarter. I'm not, uh, everything's going to be free. Like usual, I have all the assets and uh, everything up on the uh, website, my website, uh, vectorart.club. If you have not been there, check that out. Uh, these are all the other affinity designer tutorials that I've done. Uh, the latest ones, Deadpool, uh, there is brushes for sale. If you do, uh, want to the full deck of brushes, if not, uh, there's still free brushes. So check it out. I hope you guys are digging it. Uh, thanks for supporting my channel. Make sure you subscribe and like, and all that stuff. And, uh, I'll see you guys next time.